All right, hi everybody. Today we're gonna to talk about one of my student Kenny's um, case study. In this call, he's walking me through and presenting his prototype. We're also talking through some of the issues he faced while putting this together, as well as some of the things he wants to test for his user testing. So that's the last little piece he's missing before he wraps up this case study and finishes portfolio. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments or schedule a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with me. I'd love to talk to you, learn a little bit more about your journey so far in learning UX and see how I can help you. Now, let's jump into it. Are you able to see it? Yep, perfect. Okay, perfect. So when I was designing this, I was kind of, since it's not like a full featured app, I just want to make it feel like it as well. So when I was going through it, I was thinking about like what things I would kind of see on other apps. And I usually saw that like the top navigation usually stays idle as or um, static, I guess is what they call it too. And as well as the navigation. So I made that um, in the edits over here with the fixed header and fixed footer. So we get this kind of effect. Um, so when I was going through, I did all of the icons that I made red routes for, which were the main calendar, the favorites, my fridge, and the list. Um, so the first thing that I kind of did was work on the main calendar. So click on it, quickly transitions. And again, I made sure that it was consistent with the top header and the footer being static. So whenever you're scrolling, it's kind of, you know, like the simple interface. And the first red route is like adding an event. And so pops up, should be good. Um, and so I think like this is where I kind of go wrong in the sense of I don't know how to like have the submit button as well, because there's more to this menu. But if you were to be able to scroll, you'd be able to see the entire menu. And then once you input everything, then you click add. And of course, like in that you choose like a new list. So then it quickly changes over and you see like the color change, as well as the icon change highlighting that you are in your list and that you're going to add something. Um, again, with the static, uh, the top and the bottom. You can still scroll full screen already. Can we pause um, for, for a second? Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. um, so it's called fixed navigation. Um, okay. The bottom, the stuff that you were saying static, just so that you know that. Um, mm -hmm. Can you go back to the last screen? You said that you couldn't scroll for some reason. Yeah. Is that what was happening? Um, I could scroll, but like in the um, picture, because I like have this right here, the, you said static navigation, right? Yeah, the navigation, yeah. Um, because I had to put this in the picture, oh, I couldn't fit the whole entire okay. thing. Yeah, so what you do, a little trick for prototyping there is you actually add more screen to your your artboard, you make it a little bit longer. So then oh, okay. you scroll over the, the navigation. Um, it's not something you would do on like a deliverable or, you know, something that's ready for production. But sometimes mm -hmm. when you're prototyping, if you're doing fixed navigations or fixed headers, you mm -hmm. want to add a little bit more space so that then you can scroll and see the call to action that should be like right under travel time, right? Right. It should be, well, under alert under and stuff alert. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So try that after and, and we'll see if, if, if it works. Okay, perfect. Um, let me see. Okay, so after like adding it, we go to our uh, adding um, in your like shopping list because that's what we chose in that um, last menu. Um, and I did, I guess like I just did the uh, navigation like normal in the sense of like I want to add by picture. So I did this. Of course, I couldn't make it like. Uh, right where the barcode is, is kind of like make it a little interactive where, you know, you have to move the camera since it's not going to be perfect position whenever you do it. Um, and so I made the shutter button go back to like you're adding because once you take the picture, it should already like upload that information and then you want to add like another item to your list. 
Um, so then moving on to the second red route is to your favorites. Um, everything seems pretty good here. I didn't really have any other problems with this. Um, and so the red, this, the red route ended up being like being able to filter in your favorites. Uh, one question I kind of had was do in this kind of prototype, do we have to have something that makes it look interactive or is this okay to keep? That's okay to keep it like that. Um, okay. Usually what you, what you want to do is you want to make sure the prototype serves a function for the user testing that you're trying to do. Right, because mm -hmm. that's the, the point of this prototype is to convey kind of your design to stakeholders or to do your user testing. So mm -hmm. as long as you can accomplish those tasks that you're about to create for the user testing, then mm -hmm. that should be fine. If, if the prototyping and the um, restrictions of the prototype don't allow you to do that, then mm -hmm. you know you should find like a more complex way to show interactions and, and such, but it's not needed. Um, if, if you can check off, you know, the boxes of the user testing and the explaining your product. Okay, perfect. Um, so with that being said, then, you know, it's kind of like, quote unquote, like a pre preset, whatever, like the recipe I chose to design for an example. So after, you know, filling out the time, highlighting the vegetables, summer brunch, et cetera, that you want to do, click on show results, and then you get a full page of your recipe here. And um, some of the designs I saw saw um, had the main picture of the food um, say always stay at the top. So I did that. And so everything else, like the nutrition information and the ingredients that you need, the directions, et cetera, are scrollable. You can always go back to the top. The one thing I also included in this red route was being able to like unfavorite something in case you didn't like it. So I made that to where if you click the heart, unfavorite it. If you want to favorite it again, favorite it back button also works back to going back to the filter. Um, I also made it to where you can swipe right and you'll end up being in like the screen that you were previously. Um, the next red route would be in your fridge. Reuse, you know, some of the pictures. And, but in this one, we wanted to directly add like an ingredient or something. Um, so adding, again, you have kind of like the same interface so that the user is already um, used to seeing like how it's going to be, except this time I made sure that the fridge was um, at the top instead of my list. That was one of the errors that I caught when I was prototyping um, before. And I made sure that, you know, like the icons were also highlighted the same instead of like one or the other. Again, click on the camera. This time, like different picture um, to show like we're adding something. Uh, make, making sure that the UPC code is um, present and shutter button. And then you see that you have your cherries that you just did. So it's uploaded into your fridge automatically with a new icon to let you know, like um, this is a recent addition. And one of the things for the red route is being able to like remove certain items from um, your fridge um, of ingredients, either because it went bad, because you didn't use it in time after the warning on the homepage, or like multiple reasons. So um, in real life, I wanted it to be where you hold it down, um, kind of like already on the iPhone, where you like want to get rid of stuff on your home screen. But here, I was able to do a double tap. And so then you have your X's. Um, and so I made this X clickable to where you can remove it and then you're back at the main fridge screen. And that's all the red routes that I had. Awesome. Um, this looks great. I think it's come a long way from like that first iteration um, that mm -hmm. we worked on. Um, what are your thoughts in terms of like using Envision to prototype? Um, did you run into any problems that you kind of had to figure out? What was that experience like? Envision was actually pretty simple. Uh, they have everything very, like upfront. And I like that in the course, it gave like uh, links and videos to, or specific videos to watch. One of the things that I found kind of hard was at first when one of the designs didn't work the way I wanted, I tried to use the overlay function where you would have um, like a PNG of something that didn't have any other thing except for that, that one isolated um, picture and try to use it as an overlay in a different screen. Um, but that didn't work for some reason, even though following their tutorial. So 
I don't know if it was like a user error on my part or if it was something Envision like hasn't worked out on their end either. Um, other than that, I felt like your course really did explain Envision very well and did the steps perfectly to let me know like this is what I should be doing in order to set things up. Cool. Um, any other questions about this um, or, you know, the stuff coming up? Yeah. So the, I just wanted to go back to like the, the filter stuff uh, with the user testing. So you see here how we have like input menus. It's okay that they can't actually type, right? As long as they, like, uh, I just want to ensure because I don't know if I had to go back and design like specific uh, different screens for um, user testing that say like, you know, like certain ingredients. Yeah, so if, if you're testing the filtering, um, mm -hmm. as they're going through this, when they click there, you would just mm -hmm. want some, it, they don't have to be able to type, just have an action okay. happening if they click there, if that's how they would wanna do it. And if not, gotcha. something really great for testing is when you set up your tests and you start talking to them and, um, you know, explaining the test, you tell them like, you know, this is not a fully built out app. So there may think, mm -hmm. may be things that you expect to work that don't yet work. Um, and if that right. happens, please think out loud and tell me where you're trying to click before you click so that we make sure mm -hmm. that I know what you were trying to do before you're just kind of like clicking everything to see where, where it goes. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Um, thank you for that. 